This is an Asus uh, VG uh, 27AG uh, monitor that I bought literally today and we're going to be breaking into it. Yeah, so I tested it, made sure it works and it's a good enough monitor, the panel is kind of trashy, bunch of backlight bleed but I figured I'm not going to get a better one if I return it on warranty, yeah, so I'm just going to deal with it. Maybe we can bend the panel out. Uh, backlight bleed is usually caused by bent panel. Uh, but that's not the reason I want to take it apart. The reason I want to take it apart is because uh, this thing uh, does not go below 100 candle per square meter brightness, uh, which is just completely ridiculous. 100 candle per square meters is usually about as bright as a CRT will ever go and you can go infinitely down from that. Uh, I have very light sense device and I have a habit of always modifying my monitors uh, to make them go dimmer. Uh, I usually set at la around something like, shush, 20 candle per square meter, below that even, very, very dim brightness. Uh, and uh, let's uh, just see if we can do it. It's usually just a question of replacing uh, the center resistor in the backlight drive circuit for uh, a higher value, so it's going to think it's feeding more current into the LEDs uh, than it actually does. Uh, but we're going to have to start by getting into it. I've got a blade, we've got a rear panel. Let's go. Oh wow, I can see why this thing's going to have backlight bleed with this kind of panel, mate. Oh wow. I am really not impressed with the panel mount in this thing. We have this uh, soft foamy type material around the corners which is going to absolutely force them to bend the panel when they push it in. There's no way we're getting the panel mounted without uh, bending it this way. No wonder it's got some issues. And uh, the worst panel uh, backlight bleed was down by the corner of the power buttons. And that's where we have this foamy bit. So there we go. That's, that answers that mystery. Uh, the most common uh, cause for uh, backlight bleed is just for the panel is ever so slightly bent. Now this guy had it, most most of the backlight bleed was in that corner. Some in this corner, and if I actually took and physically put some force on the panel and bent it, uh, it would uh, change the nature of backlight bleed. So perhaps we'll have a decent chance of improving that a bit while we're in here. But uh, for the time being, means the contents of this box is... Uh, what we're looking for. All right, and inside the metal can, we have a microphone wipe, two boards. Uh, the main board, which uh, has nothing interesting on for us at all, and the LED drive board. Uh, it's a separate board, which is really lovely to see. I am tired of having these integrated into uh, main boards and paste plants where they uh, always go on fire and ruin everything. Uh, and this is a nice uh, little module uh, in particular because uh, the, the LED driver chip, this guy, uh, is an MP3398, which is the same exact chip they use in the BenQ XL2411T, which is what my old monitor was. So I've done this exact modification in the past, and I know exactly what we're dealing with. Uh, so I've got the data sheet up here, and uh, the MP3398 is really nice because it uses... Uh, an LED uh, current setting resistor rather than a variable uh, output current sense resistor. Uh, so we have this beautiful formula in the data sheet itself, where we, in no uncertain terms, uh, get uh, uh, an easy way of adjusting the LED output current without having to even consider the voltage of a string. Uh, and uh, this is determined by the resistor hooked up to pin number six on this guy. So this is the uh, MP3398, and on pin six, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, uh, we have the current setting resistor. And that would be this guy here. And I measured him, 
and uh, that is a 3.3k resistor which is uh, setting this to drive really super hard at a hundred at 300 milliamps a drive current on the leds uh, now for reference the drive current on the xl2411 uh, i believe was uh, th this was a 5k by default on that so let me crunch the numbers on it 5000 uh, that drove at 200 milliamps and that was already a rather brutal monitor uh, so uh, we're going to change this resistor uh, for a higher value uh, on my old monitor i just put a potentiometer so i could adjust it uh, as i pleased uh, but i don't think i want to and mess with the case on this one and make a hole for it. Uh, so I think we're gonna experiment a couple of times. Probably, I, I want like maybe a quarter of a brightness we can get out of this thing, maybe even a bit less. Uh, so we're gonna be going for something like 10K maybe. That would give us about 100 milliamps, which is just a third, so we can really go even further, 12K. 12K is 80 milliamps. That sounds about right. So let's uh, shoot for that and see what happens. All right, and there we have it, uh, screwed together somewhat and doing a bit of a test. So I've just got uh, a Display Pickals uh, interactive tool going and uh, I said I was going to shoot for 30 candela minimum setting and, uh, well, you can't be much happier than that, can you? Uh, so that's our minimum setting and we seem to have a range of brightness, which is rather narrow on this thing, of about three times. Uh, uh, brightness from brightest to dullest, so this should bring us up to about a hundred, maybe. Nah, uh, we get about fifty, fifty-five, and I uh, that might be perhaps a tad on the dim side. I'm gonna have to think about this for a moment. Perhaps we'll go down to ten uh, k. Uh, on the resistor. I know that uh, this monitor has a really good range. It uh, could be ever so slightly uh, brighter and I'd still be fine with it. So I'm going to use uh, this guy for a reference. If this does a 30 candler uh, minimum or if it does a, a bit less than that, uh, I'll, I'll just make a bit of a comparison and uh, judge from that. Yeah, we can see that uh, my extra monitor has a much wider brightness range. Uh, it goes from 25 to 120. Uh, so I probably want to bring this guy up uh, a bit more so we can at least get to like 80 or something. So I'm going to try 10k, maybe 8k too. I must say though, I'm really disappointed in the brightness range of this monitor. Like, that's the full range from minimum to maximum. It's it's just very poor. If we compare that to that guy, you just have so much more uh, range on my crappy old bank you than you do on this new fancy thing. All right, I couldn't help myself. I added a potentiometer. So let's uh, have a quick look at uh, how this works and uh, why this kind of brightness adjustment is uh, far better than what we had before. All right, and here is the uh, single modification I have done. Uh, I have returned the value of the resistor to the original 3.3 kilo ohms, and I've rotated it 90 degrees. To do that, I've had to cut the trace underneath the resistor. Uh, if you recall, there was uh, three footprints along this trace, uh, all connected to the same uh, trace. Uh, so I cut that, uh, the, the other end of that doesn't go anywhere, and I've rooted the end of the resistor to one end of my potentiometer. 
So if this wire runs off, it goes through the potentiometer and returns in the white one, which goes to where the 3.3K resistor used to connect when it was across like that. So what we've done is we've taken the 3.3K resistor, put a 10K potentiometer in series, and put it back to where, it, where it's supposed to go. So by turning the potentiometer uh, in maximum brightness mode, we have the original 3.3K with no resistance really in the potentiometer, giving us maximum brightness. And in the minimum mode, we have 10K in series with the uh, original resistor, giving us 13.3K, which is a bit dimmer than what we saw on the test. So this really gives us a much, much wider brightness range from 30 candela to 300 candela compared to the uh, 30 to 50 we got before, or the 100 to 300 in the default configuration. So we just get a lot more dynamic range for our buck. Well, brightness range, I should say. Now the question remains, how do we actually adjust it? Where do we mount it? Well, I've drilled a hole <laughs> in my brand new 500 euro monitor. So the potentiometer is going to poke out here. You can see the OSD buttons uh, in the corner there. So it's going to be just above the uh, OSD joystick, uh, easily accessible behind the monitor on the side. I wanted to put it uh, close to the edge, but uh, due to the way the edge is uh, tapered like that, it, uh, it wouldn't allow uh, it would actually make the potentiometer protrude out of the side, making it really annoying if we ever want to have more than one monitor beside this thing uh, on the right hand side. So I had to put it a bit in toward the middle where the, we, the rear of the case is actually somewhat flat. So let's just uh, put that together and uh, see if it works. Now there is the potentiometer and it's wiring. Just a bit of Cat5 going to a female pin header, hanging loosely like all the other factory stuff in here. And on the back side, we have a volume knob from an Onkyo uh, AV receiver, which is uh, kind of the right size to be easily accessible to just do that with. And it actually doesn't protrude from the side. It, I can't have it really all the way down, flush against the shaft and potentiometer is too long, but that doesn't bother me. That's absolutely fine. Now there we have the entire thing hooked back together and it really turned out much nicer than I did. Expect we have a wire crossing over there. The new little wiring thing comes out next to the LED output and it's uh, the connectors taped down there to keep it in place and stop it rattling around. Uh, everything's really ready to go. I've kind of uh, poked away at the foam here in the corner to hopefully alleviate some of the backlight bleed issues. Uh, looking at the panel, it's uh, a wee bit bent, but uh, not really too bad. So I'm a bit hesitant to try to uh, bend it more, but we'll, we'll see if I choose to do that. won't be able to catch it on camera, it's too finicky. And there we have it installed back in place and right now I have a reasonably typical lighting for this room, somewhat brighter than usual uh, and uh, the monitor is set to its factory minimum brightness setting. Here you can see how absolutely eye-ruiningly bright that is. Now if we go my fancy little knob. We can bring that down to something that looks quite a lot more natural. So, if we have a look at the uh, Dispical thing, uh, you can see that our minimum brightness level now is a 28.26 candela uh, per square meter, which is a bit less than we had before, which is what we'd expect since our uh, Current setting resistor now is 13K rather than the 12K we tried with. And if we turn the brightness up, it's soon enough going to shoot up to about 100 candela. 
which is a factory default. Uh, I don't think I've managed to do much about the uh, backlight bleed. It's still rather bad in that corner, even though I did uh, take some and uh, make some effort to kind of poke away at the foamy stuff. But oh well, that's a minor issue when it's done at reasonable backlight levels. It's nowhere near as noticeable as it was on the original setting. So there you go. That's lovely. I really like how this turned out. It's a bit finicky to move it around and lean it against things and so forth, but uh, really every monitor should have that. So there you go. That's uh, me drilling a hole <laughs> in a brand new 500 euro monitor. Cheerio. All right, I must say, having used this for a few days, this is just absolutely fantastic. Just being able to stroke the monitor like that and adjust the brightness, this is, ah, oh, it, it's just an amazing user experience to be able to do that compared to having TV use monitoring on the PC or go fiddle in the stupid OSD just for brightness. Ah oh, man, I don't even need to use any force, it's just feather light touch, I'm stroking it gently. Beautiful, very, very successful modification. Cheerio.